I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today we're looking at battery checkers. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh, battery checkers, what could you just say? You just plug the battery and it shows you the voltage. Well, haha, my friend, you have not seen this yet. And we'll start with this one. The little guy is the BC-8S, and it is, it's essentially just a, a basic battery checker. So if we take a battery here and we plug in the balance lead right here, one of the nice things about these ISDTs, by the way, is that they use a single set of pins for the balance connector, whereas the other ones use a bunch of different balance plugs and you have to plug into the one you want. It's a small thing, but it's it's very nice to be able to just plug in here. And I think I've been told by someone in the industry that the reason you don't see anyone else doing this, at least not as far as I know, is that ISDT actually has a custom mold for this kind of connector. And that's, they, they basically invented it and that's why no one else does it. So anyway, you plug in here, whether, whether, however many cells your battery has, it comes right up and it shows you the voltage on each of the cells. So it's a battery checker, right? Big deal. You got two buttons right here, top and bottom. If we go down, we'll go to this screen and this is gonna show the lowest cell and the total uh, pack voltage. And here on this screen, now the cool thing about this screen is it's a little hard for you to tell probably, but these bars are actually split. Um, the, the, the top half of the bar shows the lowest that the cell has been, and the bottom half of the bar shows the current cell voltage. So the idea here is that you'll plug this into your balance connector, you'll install it on your quad somehow, and then when you're done flying, you can come back and you can look and you can see how low the, not just the pack as a whole, but the individual cells got while you were flying. And that's a little bit cool. Uh, Betaflight OSD or your Tyrannus can give you your minimum pack voltage while you're flying, but not on a cell by cell basis, at least not without installing an additional sensor. Anyway, I would not, however, at all, recommend that you install this on your quad as they suggest. It's just not durable enough. It's it's going to do fine, I suppose, just sort of banging around in your pocket. But um, uh, this very trip, which you can see I'm in a hotel room, I put this in my check bag and it was, it was in the box that it came in. So it had a little bit of padding stuck in there. And oh, here, I'll show you. There you can go. And sure enough, when I opened it, uh, the screen, the front, the front panel had just come off it was just in there and the little OLED screen had also come off they're just stuck in place they're not like screwed down or anything they're stuck in place with some really sticky adhesive and it come loose I don't know maybe that happened in shipping when it was being delivered to me from China but it just didn't fill me with confidence that this is strong enough certainly not strong enough to put on your quad anyway so don't do that and that brings us then to the BG8S which is a battery checker but it's a lot more than that. Let me just go ahead and plug the battery in. Same uh, design on the balance port here. We've also got an XT60 port. You'll see what that's for in a minute. So this is, uh, as you can see from me screwing around with the menu, it's a battery checker, but there's a lot more going on here than just a battery checker. We've got these, well, we've got the cell voltages here. We've got the total cell voltage. It gives a percentage. I don't really think that means a lot to me. I think you should think about batteries uh, in terms of their voltage. So this guy is at 3.8 volts per cell roughly and it's pretty close to storage voltage. That's where generally where I would want to end a flight if I was flying. I'd want it resting right about here. You can see it's showing us that the cell is out of balance by 14 millivolts and if I want to fix that one way to fix it is to just go ahead and charge it. Well what if you don't want to charge your batteries? What if you just want to get them nice and balanced because I don't know because you like round numbers? Well this guy's got you covered. So what I can do is this will actually act as a balancer by just going to the cell balance program and start and it will pull uh, current or pull power from the cells that are high and push it into the cells that are low until all the cells are balanced. That's pretty cool. So the other thing you can do with this is if you plug USB into it, it and then I'm gonna go USB charge start it is a USB charger. And, hang on, not just that, but you can, I don't know if you can see, it says fast charging here. 
It's actually a USB Qualcomm USB quick charger, which means that it can, well, charge your phone faster. You can see here a typical USB charger will charge at 5 volts and 2 amps max. A quick charger is charging at 9.2 volts here, or 5 watts, and that means it's going to charge your phone, well, faster. If you have a phone that does quick charge, then you know how much faster it charges. In fact, uh, it was with this cool little meter here that I learned something very interesting. Notice that my phone is charging at 0.6 amps and 5.5 watts, when, but watch what happens when I turn the screen off. It goes up to 1.4 amps and 12.9 watts. In other words, the phone is charging faster with the screen off. I've always suspected this, and now I have proof. Ha 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 ha. If we look at the menu here, we can see the other functions of this. I can change the battery type. I do have to change the battery type manually. It doesn't auto detect. And I can set the low voltage alarm and this will cause it to give off an alarm if the battery becomes over discharged. I'll stop the USB charging there. Another cool function that this has, I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate this right now, but it's the receiver tester. You can actually plug a PWM or S bus receiver into uh, the balance port and It'll actually show the readout of the channels in real time. So this is a great way to test a receiver. If your flight controller is refusing to respond to your receiver and you suspect your receiver might be messed up, you could run your receiver into this guy and use it kind of like a little signal analyzer. It's pretty slick. So here's my final word then on these chargers. And at this point, if you've already made up your mind that you want to buy one of them, eh, don't listen to me. Just go ahead down to the video description, click the product link, and spend your own money however you like. The BC-8S, I don't think that it's a recommendation for me. I don't think I recommend that you buy it. It's about 15, 16 bucks, and its functionality is actually, I mean, it's prettier and it's smaller, but functionally speaking, I don't think it's any better than the little eight, $9 one that I've used forever, and it's way less robust. In fact, just in the context of this video, you can see, I don't know if you can see, there you go, the screen has already started coming off again. Now I may have gotten a defect, but I just, you know, I get what I get. If I had bought this, I would not be super impressed. And you can see here, this little guy is, oh, yep, yep. This one is just basically no good. Now this guy is a different story. This guy is 30 bucks, which is a lot to ask for a battery, uh, battery checker, but it's a lot more than just a battery checker. Like the USB quick charge function, you can pay 13 bucks, 10, 10, 13, 10, 15 bucks, something for a, just a USB charger with an XT60, right? You can pay that much for it and it won't do quick charge 3.0. That doesn't get you to 30 bucks, but it certainly is something to think about. The, the other thing that this does is that it's got BatGo technology built in. Now, BatGo is a subject for another video, but it's basically like black box for your batteries. A BatGo compatible battery will have a little memory chip in it that stores information. And whenever a BatGo compatible charger interacts with the battery to charge it, to discharge it, it'll store that information. So you can then plug the battery into your computer. There's a little USB adapter for BatGo and you can look at every charge and discharge cycle for the entire life of the battery. As far as I know, nobody manufacturing batteries actually supports BatGo yet. If I'm wrong about that, I please tell me in the comments, I wanna know. But BatGo has the potential to be pretty huge. ISDT has defined the BatGo standard and I think they're hoping that manufacturers will pick it up and then their chargers and, and these little guys will be really cool. And if that does happen, having a BatGo compatible thing like this to let you, like could it, if you plug in a BatGo battery in a future firmware update, will you be able to like check the number of charge discharge cycles on your little guy in the field or who knows what else it could do. That's pretty cool. So. This guy's 30 bucks and that's gonna be out of many people's price range, but I do think it has a unique feature set that might make it worth it for some people. Heck, if you just spend a lot of time on a plane, maybe having a little quick charge adapter for your batteries might be worth that to you, I don't know. Okay, there you go. I've got links to all of this stuff in the video description, including the little $9 cheapy that I've used forever and that'll probably still be my favorite for a long time, although I don't know. Leave any questions you got down in the comments. Look for my upcoming reviews of some new ISDT chargers in just a little bit. Thank you for watching. Happy flying.